my name is Paul Grigerson, and I'd like to talk about the new Come, Follow Me lesson for the new year about Moses and the Book of Abraham. But first, I'd like to sing a song. I blind to those who think that God cares nothing for his own, who fail to read the answers from the prophets who've been shown, fail to read the meanings written deep upon each page. are not yet open, for they cannot see the truth. The book for us was written as a guide for wandering you. So help us read that we may see the answers to our prayers. We may know within our hearts the truth of all that's there. Lord tells Abraham that his seed shall be numbered as the stars in heaven. In other words, we're talking about his seed, not stars. So in Abraham 3 verse 4, the Lord is not telling Abraham to teach the Egyptians about astronomy at all. He's telling him to teach them about his posterity as an object lesson using the stars. This is about his posterity and the priesthood. Only that his posterity would be numerous as the stars. For the Egyptians understood that the sun ruled the day and the moon ruled the night. And the sun was greater than the moon. So just as the moon is above the earth, so the star or the sun is above the moon. But see in verse 19, that's not the point the Lord is trying to make. He's comparing these spirits with heavenly bodies. In other words, the word spirit in Egyptian is star. Now one spirit is brighter than the other, like unto the sun being brighter than the moon. But I, the Lord, am the brightest of all the stars, the brightest of all the spirits up in heaven. Therefore, he's making an object lesson out of this, using stars as spirits. So in the pre-existence, he's talking about Abraham and these other prophets that will become his rulers. So he tells Abraham that he is a bright star, and he was chosen before he was born. So the sun and the moon and the stars are a clock. So are the prophets. Each prophet reckons time according to his own dispensation. So the heavenly bodies are the clock that keep time for the prophets upon the earth. Each prophet has his own time period or dispensation. So does Kolob symbolize Christ, who is near or next to the Father? Then we have the prophets, lesser lights who only reflect the light of the priesthood of God. Then the smaller stars who represent all of us, or Israel. So Abraham is teaching the Egyptians about a priesthood hierarchy. Why? Was it not because the Egyptians literally believed that when their king died, he would ascend up to heaven and become a literal star, not symbolic? Thus the adversary was able to divert mankind into worshiping the stars as false gods. Is it not obvious why Joseph Smith added this illustration of facsimile 2 into the book of Abraham? Here we have a counterfeit of God the Father and Kolob right here. And here we have the Son Jesus Christ being counterfeited by an Egyptian god. In other words, a counterfeit of the book of Genesis. The circle representing eternity or time. The timeline of earth from Adam until the end of time when we reach eternity over here. Then down here we have an earthly timeline that is synchronized with the heavenly timeline up here. We have this boat figure which the prophet indicates is the expansion of time. Underneath the boat figure, which is number four, we have the numbers nine, ten, and eleven. I give you the numbers nine through eleven. eleven, 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 eleven. Joseph Smith says he wants the whole world to find out what these numbers nine through eleven mean. Why are not the scholars interested in this? Can someone explain why figure three here, which is talking about God's throne giving light to the prophets Noah and Abraham, is not being connected to the figure over here on facsimile two? We have three here being connected with three here, 
but no explanation. The Lord emphasizes the fact that this is all about the reckoning of the Lord's time. He sets a time clock on each star. So stars are numbered. They create a timeline from beginning to end down here. Obviously, the stars related to time, starting with Adam, Melchizedek, Abraham, and all the prophets, they make a timeline throughout the Earth's history. Is this not why a star was directly related to the time of Jesus Christ's birth? It marked the very time on the timeline that he would fulfill his mission. Abraham is saying that there are lesser stars that also mark the time and the birth of God's prophets. Abraham saw that each prophet in the preexistence was foreordained to come to earth and be born. In other words, establish a birthright. This covenant ship represents the wings of time. Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The ship is number four. Joseph is number five. Ephraim, six. Then we have Joseph Smith, number seven. We have greater stars and we have lesser stars in the birthright. Of course, in number eight, we have the temple marked right down here. It's so elementary, just match the number here over here. See, match number eight, it contains the writings of the temple that can't be revealed. Obviously, this is the endowment, number eight. Here's the star kolob representing God right here, number one. Here's number two representing Jesus Christ, the creator. This is about measuring proximity using this map of facsimile two, not some space science comparison. Turn the facsimile upside down, we have the earthly realm. On the earthly timeline, we have number five, which represents the tribe of Joseph, which will bring the last dispensation nigh unto the proximity of God's throne, number one. And as you can barely see, the stars, the small stars, are being gathered to this small ship of Zion, which is marked underneath by the numbers 9, 10, 11, to number four. So we're measuring time until we come nigh unto the throne of God. The proximity of 9, 10, 11 being associated with the boat. All the numbers that represent time, including 9, 10, 11, which add up to 30, reach the end. We add 30 to 1800 and we get 1830, the restoration of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saint. So after 200 years of saints looking at all this and not understanding it, isn't it about time we study the illustrations Joseph Smith placed in the book instead of looking for other theories? There is a perception out there that Abraham's cosmology propelled him into the elite class among the Egyptian astronomers, approved by Pharaoh himself, they say. Obviously, facsimile one added to the text shows us just the opposite. The Egyptians wanted to kill Abraham because they hated what Abraham taught. They didn't like hearing that they had counterfeited the gospel of Noah, that their star cosmology was all wrong. This wouldn't have happened if Pharaoh didn't go along with it. A prophet of God would never seek to agree with the idolaters. I'd like to thank you very much for listening. There's a lot going on here. If you have any questions, please contact me. And remember to pray about everything that you read and study. Thank you very much. Below I'm going to provide the links where you can watch my videos and decide all this for yourself.